Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Final Fantasy VII Remake Conspiracy Theory <laughs> episode. You, you've come to expect them here, nerds at large. You can't hold us down. We don't have our tinfoil hats on us right now, but... We, we can't let Easy Allies beat us <laughs> on Final Fantasy VII content. <laughs> we gotta be ahead of the game, on the front lines, here for you, doing everything, um... We are going to be digging into the translated information from the Final Fantasy VII Remake Ultimania book, which is 750 pages, and I want it. I would be <laughs> reading all 750 of those pages <laughs> if I could right now. I, I guess I need to go learn. I don't know if I can learn Japanese or it gets translated. Which one will happen first? We've got to figure it out. Um, but there have been lots of awesome... Um, translations online uh, from one specific Twitter user that we're going to go through. We'll definitely give her credit. But um, we we're going to go through kind of the revelations that came because there's some juicy stuff in here, Jeff. Juicy. Very juicy stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, that's going to be there. This is separate from the podcast. It's going to be a separate thing. Make sure you go check out our Final Fantasy VII Remake spoiler cast that we did with Chad from Respawning Fire and our hour-long uh, discussion about the ending that was also kind of a video like this but it spun out into an hour because we can't control ourselves with this game no nope. <laughs> i legitimately could open up a whole new podcast just talking about this game <laughs> so here we go jeff do the honors please okay so yeah first to give credit the got all this translation stuff from twitter user at i don't want to say it um i'll just spell it or i take ye mochi I love her. Her name, is, her name is Audrey on Twitter, but yeah, yeah, you can spell it on Twitter. Um, it's at a i t a i k i m o c h i. We a bunch of dumb Indian Americans. Yep, don't know how to pronounce shit. Uh, From the south, no less. Yep. So just the way this is, um, it's going to be kind of out of order because some of the stuff is just based on some information stuff, random pages from it, and there's an interview that Namora and a whole bunch of other people. Or and Katase and um, Nojima did, and some of it's a little out of order, but yeah, let's let's get started. First thing I got in here, Namura and Katase don't know how many parts they will be. <laughs> Namura says smaller parts might mean less death time to or time to get one out. Wow. Yeah, which is um, I mean, kind I mean, kind of what they already said um some here sorry for anyone watching this in video form i am just uh throwing up here the twitter handle uh that we are getting this stuff from so there it is just in case you're um you want to go see that afterwards all the translation stuff here for the interview questions pretty cool stuff so yep. yeah um but that being said let me get back up here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so when they talked about it from E3, they also said like they didn't know how many parts this would be. I mean, I guess it is still interesting now that like they you know this one's out and they still don't completely know. Yeah. Um, but it sounds more like they kind of know what they're going to do. The question is, where do they break it off? Like what, <laughs> what do they count as? Like, all right, this is going to be one part. You know, and, yeah. and like the more I was kind of getting at that, like it could either be like a way more game included in one, and it takes several years, or they could put them out in smaller chunks mm -hmm. um, in shorter amount of time. Um, I mean, personally, I'm okay either way uh, because but the, the I, former bigger parts save us money. <laughs> No. Yeah, it will save us money. Obviously, I have faith just in the quality of this game that even if they broke it up into smaller chunks, it would still be worth the money. I mean, hmm. this game could have been half of this game, and I still think it would have been worth $60 for me. I totally get why other people might feel differently, but like for me, it would even if this is a five-part thing or something, it would still be worth the money for me. Obviously... I think, you know, the more fan for a thing would be if it was a trilogy or four games or something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They mentioned in one of these, um, one of the questions specifically, like, I think the interviewer mentioned about a trilogy and I, I can't remember which one of them in particular might have been more. It's like, yeah, we, yeah, the trilogy is just kind of fan stuff without any, uh, 
actual evidence behind it pretty right. much. Right. Yeah, he but, said like that's the most popular thing we've been hearing or yeah. something. But I I've seen some people upset like oh no, no they don't know what they're doing because they don't have how many parts like man a lot of they're putting so much in this stuff they may not know until at least I I think by at some point they will know how many parts but since they're kind of early on in this thing in general um, since you know they're just done with Midgar and just the early parts of development of the second part, I can get why they may not know the full scope of it un- yeah. until later. It is a it's a tad unconventional to yeah. like to have you know like I don't want to say as little planned out because I'm sure they know what they're going to do as far as like the game is concerned or at least the overall main scenario like the main beats of the game. It's a tad unconventional to have like. We don't know how many games we're making here. Like, like, I, because, like, you know, not knowing how many games, like, the difference between four games and five games could be the difference of, like, four years, you know, of yeah. your life working on this. It's a, it's a tad unconventional to not know when the end of this project will be. But I think it sounds worse than it is. Because, again, I think their plan is the same. It's just how much are we, like, where is the cutoff point? Where are we... Or, and you know or something else I think they might know they just don't want to say it and put it out there and make a promise that is also very true that could also because be very true. they might have an idea like this, this, the plan this is this many parts but one thing could end up being a lot bigger and they said like okay we can get another extra another yeah. you know we'll need another part out of this or we feel like doing another part right um, I mean there's definitely in other points in this interview when they didn't want to say something they were a little more coy about it you know yeah. but also, some of this, like, a lot of the very literal nitty-gritty things that are said in here, you kind of have to take with somewhat of a grain of salt because, like, the translation stuff in Japanese to English is always <laughs> rough. Hmm. It's always, a, it's a, you know, things are left out. But, I mean, this is true, that they don't know exactly where this is going to yeah. end. I'm not, like, losing my mind or like, getting really nervous about that because, again, I still think that... I mean, from when you get other points in the interview, they they know where they they know where they're going with mm-hmm. it overall. It's just, it, they're not just making it up completely as they go. No, like some people feared. <laughs> okay, that ending would be very troubling if they are doing that. Oh, 100 <laughs> said, "Oh yeah, we're kind of we're still kind of putting the things together now. <laughs> we don't know. Yeah, there's we like, killed okay. fate. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> yep. And kind of speaking on the story part of it. Oh yeah, and just in case this wasn't clear, spoilers for everything. <laughs> yeah, spo- I mean, I, I think I said that at the beginning, but if I didn't, I can't like, remember if you did. I'm sorry if you did. <laughs> I, I, I might not have, but if I didn't, yeah, yeah. Get the hell out of here if you, if you hadn't played yeah. the game. Go. Because this book is full of spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, could I say on how different um, the FS7 remake will be from the original story? Quote: We're not drastically changing the story and making it into something completely different than the original. Even though it's a remake, please assume the story of FS7 will continue as FF7 always has. And Nojima also said this related to that. Quote, for me, I create scenarios that follow the general flow of the original story, but with the assumption that the way things are presented or how events occur might be slightly different. And if this is all true... Best case scenario. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously, this has been the quote. The quote of this of this whole yeah. Ultimania thing and like everyone's um, taken away. It is one of those things that, like, it, it, it's hard. And, I, and, and I'm kind of, like, saying everything I'm about to say kind of more for a devil's advocate thing than anything. I, I, I think on the, like, pessimistic side of this... Um, I think they could put themselves in a situation where it's kind of weird that like I hear this and I'm like, yes, this is what I want. Thank God. But also in a way you could see that is kind of like undermining what they just did, Mm -hmm. undermining what they just did at the end of the first game. And it's kind of a weird vibe if like I'm excited for something that completely like kind of goes against the message that the end of this game was. And I think that, There's definitely a chance that they put themselves in a situation where they kind of at least mildly piss off both sides of this, the people who want drastic changes and the people that want more of a traditional thing. Because if you go from that craziness at the end and like how kind of extreme the vibe and message like the unknown journey and like destroying fate and zacks alive like it's crazy it's like it, it seemed like a very bold thing and then if you go from there and have very minor changes kind of like they're alluding to here you could definitely see people and i might be one of them say then why did you have to go so extreme with the whispers Mm -hmm. if 
all you were going to do was do slight changes because in that scenario it might be like why didn't you just do the slight changes you know why did it have to be this whole like fate thing i think there's a chance you go there and i want to let you talk about that i think more likely it, it, it's going to be somewhere in the middle yeah. it's going to be the fate stuff mattered and it's going to be plot relevant but kind of like we're saying you're still going to have like I think what they're alluding to here is we're going to the Golden Saucer, we're going to Corel, uh, we're all, going to this, yeah, the the, the know, general like, course uh, of the story. You're going to all the and I think another crow kind of pretty much says this. You're going to all the you're doing the main story beats. You're going to all these places you love. Mm-hmm. What happens there might be different. And the overall story might change, but one way or another, you are going to all these places, which is something after this ending of. A lot of people feared it was yeah uh, not questions. necessarily like going saucer necessarily as an example but other places like will we even go here or what will they change that kind of stuff like they're not going to change enough to where we're not going to these places that like people like you want to see reimagined in this style at the very least uh, and as far as like yeah how much how much it'll change if it'll be too little or too much based on the ending the way i kind of generally say especially after this like wait and see approach i guess i know it's the kind of it lame way it's like but based on this it sounds like i think they're going the right path rather it but there is some ways to kind of you can kind of look at it of the pessimism side then yeah why did you do this if it's so little mm. it, or it, it could this could be them kind of saying that to surprise like we changed a lot <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's one of those things that I mean, like minor ch- minor change or changes that seem minor might add up. I mean, like, there's definitely mm-hmm. again the pessimistic side. There's a chance that like yes, yes, we go to calm, we go you know go still soul, you know go in the same order and do all these things or whatever. But if there's a Sephiroth from another timeline coming and fucking things up and everything, it's going to change the story and it's going to change like you know like the like how everything works together in a way that even if the actual gameplay and the things that you are seeing are the same you might get to the end and be like well this was completely different yeah. you know even if it doesn't feel completely different moment to moment it it might in the end it might be like all right well this was like you know like little things i, I don't feel like i'm explaining this very well but like little no, things no, I, I get you well, just, like, well just the kind of things i yeah we're going to the same places but Wu Tai will be more involved somewhere or another. That whole yeah. that whole thing in the background will change some things. Biggs being alive yeah. will affect some things in some places probably. Just kind of stuff like that might change. And so overall stuff, it's especially as we go more in the game, things will be more and more different. I yeah. think it's still the kind of thing we've kind of predicted throughout this whole thing where at least the next part will be primarily kind of like this remake um where it is more close to the story beats there with some little right. the changes but the more we go on the more the changes will come there's even things like, like you know when we get to cosmo canyon and learn and bugenhagen tells us all the all the stuff and we see like red 13 storyline they're like are certain things like that going to have less weight because we our characters know more you know our characters have had sephiroth coming in there and like hmm. saying hey yo this is gonna happen or like fucking with you in certain ways you know there's definitely on on its worst end there's a way that things hit less hard than they did in the original just because our characters are in a different place yeah. you know our characters have had influence from the outside pretty much um which could change i mean like eris death could like i have a feeling that they'll they're gonna make it like they're not gonna fuck that up i I really i do have faith in that but there is a chance you know that that scene just does not hit as hard because our characters know what's coming or like or like they're in a completely different thing or it doesn't happen which you know if we end this game and Aerith doesn't die or there's not some big death then i'm gonna kind of call bullshit like you did this whole remake thing just to save and everyone's happy and everything's good Mm -hmm. i'm gonna be like all right what what you know (laughs) yeah but the quote does make me feel good. Mm-hmm. The quote makes me feel good. Yeah, but I guess the way to look at it from your case, even if the whole whispers thing is bullshit, you'll get closer to what you wanted either. Way, yeah, wanted. I, I do still think that I'll be at the end saying it was phenomenal, my favorite series of all time. 
Still wish that it had just been, you know, introduce Wu Tai War, introduce like, you know, yeah. Jesse's backstory, even if she's dead, you know, through other things. Introduce like the uh, like Barrett's backstory could be yeah. so expanded. You know, I, I would say I would still wish that those were the type of changes that. Oh yeah, I've done that. Time, you know? That has a lot of room for some great. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, so many things in Final Fantasy VII has the bones of a good story. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just not quite there. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not here. Um, so they also pretty much the book pretty much confirms that the whispers are fate that you fight there are the three stooges from having children. <laughs> the, the the best the best Jeff um explanation we have there. Yeah, so for people who don't know and didn't listen to our um spoiler cast, the whatever arbiters of fate or whatever the hell you fight yeah. at the very end, the one with the sword, the guns, and the arms. People in but during the regular playthrough, when you kind of when you analyze them and stuff, that they're supposed to be Cloud, Barrett, and Tifa. We all did. Yeah. I, I think the devs knew that that was going to yeah, be. I mean, no, no, no. Thing that, too, that was yeah. purpose yeah, yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure, one hundred percent. But if you pay enough attention to Advent Children, like most people don't, um, <laughs> <laughs> that you see a lot of similarities between what those characters do as far as the weapons they use, the moves they use, and the fact they've used the motherfucking Bahamut is the same as the characters in Advent it, Children. It became too perfect and then this Ultimania kind of like, I don't think it directly says like it's them, yeah. but like in the Ultimania, like there's, it has like one of the um, moves that it uses is literally the same um, name as one of the three Sephiroth children's gun yeah like his gun is like midnight something or whatever and like mm. this has that movie like it's them yeah 100 percent. so yeah i mean like this is something we pretty much already knew and we talked about in the spoiler cast like we fully believe that this was the case and this was just confirmation so that just adds more like is that is that gonna in the long run just be a cool easter egg or is that going to be an actual very important thing that they came from Advent Children and they were coming back in time? Or it might just be like the importance of this is that that's Advent Children Sephiroth and the children are dead now and don't matter. You like, killed it, Advent Children. You did what fans wanted to do for killed. years. <laughs> um, next thing. And Kent may go along with this. Nomura wanted things to be different than the original. Why well, I know Jamal wanted the entire compilation of Final Fantasy VII to be represented. So what he's saying is we're getting Dirge of Cerberus shit. <laughs> we're getting Genesis. I mean, like the. I mean, we we're kind of we're kind of already on that path. Yeah. Oh Just no, no, no. With Crisis yeah, Core and Avid Children are both wrapped into this game. And, oh no, I yeah. agree. It's, I just it's interesting to just see even if we don't talk about much who wanted what and who was kind of the I mean is anyone fucking surprised that the more is the one that <laughs> wanted drastic changes. <laughs> Is anyone in the world surprised about yeah. that? No. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's. I mean, and I think we're kind of getting both. We're getting a mix of both. Mm. Things things are definitely obviously changing, and um, obviously, Crisis Core and Avid Children already have more in impact on this than any of us thought was going to be the case. Especially and, Avid Children. Yeah. And Dirge of Service is the thing that, like, I mean, Vincent's backstory is cool. Just the way that it was told in Dirge of Service, the way it was expanded upon, was fucking terrible. I, I hope yeah, they well, take the good parts. Yeah, yeah. actually, the, no, that's a good point. Maybe the Dirge of Cerberus stuff is... I, I can't remember what the hell was in that game. You could um, have had a good version of it. No, yeah, 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 I'm saying. They, they take kind of that backbone, add it to flesh it out in this game, now that we assume Vincent's going to be... a. Uh, Mm. Party, actual party member, not just someone you could. Oh, he's not a riot. <laughs> yes, uh, you gotta give me yes. Vincent. I'm sorry. I mean, he <laughs> is. They add that to this game and make it actually a, an actual yeah. better story. And fill out. I think that's the way you do the Dirge of Cerberus thing. I think I, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I kind of hope it's one of those things that it's not straight up Dirge of Cerberus and everything in Dirge yeah, yeah. of Cerberus is canon, and it's more like. The remake version of Dirge of Cerberus is yeah, that's more again, kind of like, the same thing they, with they Advent Children. Kind of the, I, again, I can't remember, so I don't remember. I don't remember really much. Of I don't anything. remember a ton of specifics, but enough. <laughs> yeah, um, just take the general backbone of it. This might be good, and kind of just put it in this game. Right. So we don't need Dirge of Cerberus to exist for the Vincent backstory. Right. Same thing as like I think the original Final Fantasy VII timeline is not like in remake is not necessarily the exact same Final Fantasy VII timeline. It's kind of the remakes version of that, yeah. you know. And I think Advent Children might be the same way. Like I just hope that like in the same way that there are 
leaving themselves open to like add a Jesse chapter, add all this other stuff. I hope they're leaving themselves open to be like, hey, yo, this part of Dirge of Cerberus and this part of Avid Children is fucking terrible. We're going to change it. Like, I, I hope that's the case. Yeah. This was a very, next one was pretty interesting to me. Leslie is actually also in the FF7 light novel, The Kids Are All Right, a Turk side story where he's friends the main character, Evan, as well as Kyrie. Because, of also course, that's the name of it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought Leslie was a original character, like I'm assuming most people did. I but, did. Um, but he's actually from a story and actually knows Kyrie, which, you know, might lead to some stuff in the future. Yeah, definitely seems more like... It, it, it's it, they're, I mean, not that they needed a reason, but it's more obvious why like those two were two of the... Um, expanded universe characters like kind of more obscure ones that they included both of them because apparently they're connected and know each yeah. other and everything which um obviously yeah i knew nothing about him or kyrie but i knew i knew about kyrie yeah. um gen- general stuff uh, so i guess i knew about this book in general that she came from this but mm. i know leslie was also in it yeah which is interesting like i definitely like the way what they set up with leslie uh, I, we definitely like didn't get to see even act two uh, you know it, yeah. it definitely felt like a a introduction you know, oh yeah 100 really yeah really i know some people are like yeah oh, this, this, this kind of ended time. i was like oh, that's a setup for the future obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. and even kyrie is kyrie could have been a one-off thing but this made me think more that she's going to be involved in some way yeah kyrie was definitely very side mission while um leslie stuff <laughs> was more was mission, mission yeah. fleshed out yeah. thing yeah um so I, I hope Kyrie, like, I do hope that her writing and stuff is a little better in the, the future, but mm-hmm. I imagine she'll probably have more important things to do later. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Than this. Especially as she's connected to Leslie. I'm curious to see how Leslie fits in all this. We're just going to be kind of a side. <laughs> she's the girl. Oh. She's the girl, Leslie. We, we, we actually see her to fight <laughs> yeah, the girl. Okay, so next thing, I just have, what does Aerif know? I'm just going to re- read the thing that the translation before cloud even said his name Arif knew that he was an ex-soldier as well as a jack of all trades she also knew where marlene was before tifa told her pages into that when you were playing all right wait sorry say that again all right so she knew where oh wait oh wait yeah yeah, yeah wait sorry this was something i actually meant that like there's been so many conspiracy things I've, i forget what to tell you or whatever yeah people have pointed out it's fucking crazy people pointed out she when she when you go up or whatever at the at the sector seven thing tifa is like Aerith, and then like before she can even get the sentence off Aerith is like go to seventh heaven and get marlene right and she's like yeah i kind of noticed okay. that she kind of said it fast but i even put two to two together or, or she or no she told her to go to seventh heaven or whatever and before she gets she's like all right get, go into town there's gonna be a bar named seventh heaven or whatever she's like yeah i'll make sure marlene's safe and she runs on and people pointed out no one ever said marlene around her no one had ever said marlene's <laughs> name <laughs> any time before See, then. i noticed that she, you know, she's like oh she caught on to like what she wanted to do i didn't I didn't even think crazy. Yeah, I, like it, it happened so fast and everything. That, yeah, like, and you've been you've seen Marlene and you've heard characters talk about Marlene and you saw you know you've seen all this stuff or whatever. So like you don't necessarily catch it, and you know that this happens if you played original FF7. Yeah. So you're like, okay, whatever. And like you can in your mind you'd be like, okay, well like Aerith was probably around for one of those scenes where they talked about Marlene. Nope, <laughs> she That's- absolutely was not. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Continue. I, yeah, I oh. forgot to like burst out on that. Yeah. For some strange reason, Aerith knows about things even though she shouldn't yet. When Aerith touches Marlene or Red 13, they both show a very surprised expression. There must be something about Aerith that happens when she comes in contact with others. Those sly bastards. <laughs> there must be something. Huh? I wonder what that is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that was really cool. So we knew that, but the, the but the cloud thing, the Marlene thing is obviously why I put that in here and found That's it cool. It is, it is cool. Yeah. There's more to it. And, the more we kind of talk about it, the more I'm like kind of impressed the way they planted some of these seeds kind of pretty organically into this game. Right. We're like, yeah, some stuff like that. Like they, they did a very good job of like, and I, I don't know, as a writer, I would be so worried about putting something like that in. Cause I'm like, Oh, what if a bunch of people can catch that? What if a bunch yeah. of people catch that? She shouldn't know that, but like, Nope, I just, yep. Mm-hmm. I just played yeah. straight through. Like did not catch that whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, that is a cool setup. Um, obviously, we don't really get any more like this interview doesn't give us any more insight into like how she knows that, but it confirms what we already pretty much were starting to confirm that Aerith knows more. Still doesn't completely understand like, explain like why she knows some things but doesn't seem to know others. Yeah, okay, you know? but this was something else was later for some reason it's out of order. Nora says to wait until the next storm to find out why Aerith knows things in the next installment. 
Or, yeah. yeah. I don't know why Nick Stubb was in there twice. Whatever. I just want to know why there's the gaps. Why yeah. Why does Sephiroth seem to know everything and Aerith <laughs> seems to know some things but not others? Find out during the next part. Like, yeah. No, I like the mystery stuff. <laughs> oh, I do too. I do too. And stuff like that and revisiting is awesome. Yeah. You know? um, they pretty much confirm Zack is from an alternate timeline. No surprise. Yeah. They even mentioned the the skip bag and They're all. like, oh yeah, they, I think in the interview, she's like, yeah, the, the stamp bag is different, stamp huh? Bag. I wonder what that could mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I wonder. And stamp obviously means something because Namora designed stamp. It's like, <laughs> I normally don't design this, but stamps can be a big part of this, so I decided to design them. <laughs> that's that's my dog right there. That's, uh, that's, that's my that. stamp. <laughs> um, yeah, so nice to have confirmation. I mean, it was pretty obvious what that bag meant. You know, I mean, yeah, they, they made, they it, made pretty, it pretty, pretty clear. obvious. Yeah. Um, there were plans to show how Tifa ended up in the Chocobo w- wagon on the way to Corneo's, but scenes plus others got cut. And also, another example they gave is um, Tifa talking to the landlord, I forget her name. Marl. Marl, about like what dress she should wear. And uh, okay. other kind of scenarios like that that they ended up cutting. Um, yeah, this is actually one of, this is one of the very few things that whenever I was um, replaying Final Fantasy VII on stream... This is one of the few things that I, I, I said when I was playing. I was like, I bet you they're going to expand on this. I bet you they're going to show how Tifa got in this situation. And then in the remake, I'm like, oh, they actually didn't expand that. Huh, interesting. Interesting to see that that was something they were mm-hmm. thinking about doing. Kind of makes me wish I could have seen it they could have had that. But, yeah. but you know, I think it's, it's, it, it, it's fine. I'm curious to see if like, a part of that um, was... Because I think at that point we didn't control anyone mainly except for Cl- Cloud at that point. Yeah. So I wonder if they wanted to save that stuff for later for like it's kind of surprise that they didn't want to do it then. Yeah, I still wish it. Was. I mean, because like, they they're gonna do it eventually. Yeah. And yeah I think that would have been. A I mean, I, I say that, yeah, and that could have been a reason, but saying it out loud. It sounds more of a lame reason. I don't think they'd actually do it. Yeah. Cut or re- cut so, something cool like, for that. I get it, but it'd be like, come on, just let me. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I still would have been so hyped if like it came up and it was showing just teeth. I'm like, wait a minute. What the, oh, this is like, this is like, are we going to just do a Tifa solo mission? Like, yeah, oh, yeah, and, yeah, it's kind of going to wrap this like, what happened when Cloud fell? What was Tifa all doing? How, what was she reacting? Yeah. Like, just seeing how the, probably distraught she was. And just seeing how, how good of a job they did at expanding, like, Jesse and making this whole new thing. Like, I, I think that that could have been really cool, too. Yeah. And, and it could have, like, built Tifa up even more. Right? We're, like, seeing mm-hmm. this and everything. But it it's just cool to see that they, they were... That's how deep they were going to do that kind of stuff. I mean, it probably just got cut for time and other yeah. things, but um, yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. Namor initially wrote the main scenario. Why Toriyama rewrote them later? Cover director Toriyama. Right. Yeah. And I mean, in, in the yeah, it's a, it's a little more. It definitely seems like when Namor was in this interview. I mean, when he's talking about this and they're talking about like starting this project, he definitely. It sounds like he was the one like making the main overarching like just bullet point story at the beginning of this Mm -hmm. which is why i do definitely want to like call ourselves and a lot of the rest of the internet out for like our especially our early videos on this like that um ending video i definitely think we were a little off base just kind of talking about like everyone says namora for this ending and you know how this is going namora is not the writer he's like, whatever i mean I, I think we were a little off base in saying that like namora is not involved with the, the writing of this game he definitely is i mean he straight up oh he definitely was else. now but to be fair to us and everyone else we had no reason to believe no this yeah i agree I, but i definitely i want to like yeah say, yeah, yeah because you know, a lot just, of times like the like kingdom hearts if I, I might be wrong on this i don't believe them like they say Namora and other people yeah. are the writer and stuff. I even looked on Wikipedia room before it. They didn't mm. have Namora in a writing slot when I looked. No, he's I mean, he's, he's director or something. Yeah. But like he obviously had in uh, like not. And, ju- and the, not thing, just and the input, thing is with direct, the uh, like I know I've seen people point out like directors can kind of control everything. But the thing is with director, depending where you work at and where you're like it director drastic. means so many different things. It can just you mean can't a do it as a like, yeah. yeah like. I've seen some stuff for like for Japanese studios, the supervisor or some other role is more impactful to it than the actual director. Well, I think that's, like e- that. that's even like, cause I mean, again, it was not just me and you, but like yeah. there was like Max was saying the same thing. And I think Max was talking about like in Japanese game development, the director is not the one to do all this. So that's why Max was also saying like, all y'all like quit talking about Nomura because like he wasn't even the one doing this or whatever. So, I mean, you know, 
far from us being the only one, but I want to call it out because I think yeah. in that video we were like, y'all, you know, I think we were kind of aggressive about like, you need to stop like blaming Nomura. I'm, I'm still like, don't harass Nomura, yeah. but definitely Nomura was a was a very big part of what happened in this story. So, oh yeah, one hundred percent. But yeah. for Keenan Hearts, Nomura is unchained. There are other people <laughs> to rein him in on this. So Nomura's is not. <laughs> Oh, not the only one. I mean, I, I fully believe if this was just... just if, if, I mean, I, I fully believe if this was Nomura without other people ringing him in, I would not like this game nearly as much as I do. And I, I hope he does have people rating him in in the future. But, yeah. Yep. And there are a lot of people who play this game like, man, why can't people rain Nomura in some from Kingdom Hearts? Because Nomura has... Nomura is just like... He, he is a Molotov cocktail that you throw into a room. Like, he has crazy ideas and we need him. Like, bless that man. He has, bless his soul. He has ideas that no other human being can have. And you need some of that unbridled no, no, I, mean, I will say this. Like, but it needs to be yeah, like, yeah. it's a fire that needs to be nurtured and not let burn the whole building down. <laughs> For Kingdom Hearts, I'm okay with burning the whole building down. For that series in particular, it's why I love it. I don't need that for this. From this, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm okay with saying that. Okay, going on. Um, they they originally did not plan for things to diverge so much at the end. The plan was to only show Biggs alive, and they added more scenes later on. So they wanted to do, obviously do the whole thing with the um, Arters of Fate, but as far as showing stuff, it's not like they only really wanted to show Biggs and have people mm-hmm. be like, "Huh, what's that about?" And that kind of yeah. I mean, I, I guess if the direction they were going to go was going to be alternate timelines and all that stuff anyway, I guess you kind of had to blow it out. But like, definitely my instant reaction is like, this sounds better. You know, having more of a subtle ending to this sounds better than like crazy bullshit, especially if that crazy bullshit leads to not significant changes, mm-hmm. you know, but, but I don't know, you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, a lot of this just depends on what they actually do with it. Or right. Whatever. Right. Yeah. The, the, the a way to look at it potentially is them going all out like this, like kind of ripping that band aid off. Like, this is not going to be a complete one to one with some stuff. Yeah. They might have been a little too aggressive with that, depending on what they do. But like, but- I, like I said, my, my biggest problem with that and the problem I'm always going to have is they could have just done it. They could yep. have just done the not one to one remake instead of, and we're fighting the Arbiter. Of wow. you know, it could have, like they were already kind of doing that. It's like yeah, uh, the story's going, the story's going. Fucking Jesse chapter, you know. It's like oh, oh what's going on? I don't know. You know, yep. you know, they could have just. And again, I would have if this next story, if one of the first plot points is there's a Wu Tai invasion or something, I would be like, fuck, let's go, <laughs> like, let's, let's go, go bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's say. It was co-director uh, Hamaguchi's idea to fight Sephiroth, and when Namura heard, it, he was like, "Okay, sure." Yeah, so it's like he was like he was prepared to like pitch him. He was yeah. like, "Okay, I got I got to like convince him." Of him. He's like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, let's do it. yeah." Let's do it. Sephiroth battle. Right. Decided at some point, Sephiroth battle. Let's go. Get the work. Yeah. <laughs> chop chop. It's a funny little thing. Um, Namura says to. Oh yeah, I already read that. Um. Final thing I have on here, the final line Sephiroth said to Cloud were planned from the beginning. They just didn't know where they will be said. <laughs> Which is interesting. I mean, I guess, I guess you could have seen Sephiroth in one of his weird pop-ups in the middle of the game be like, seven seconds, Cloud. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like, think that more of they just had the general idea what they wanted to do. They just didn't know exactly where yeah. everything was going to go down and all that. It's, yeah. it's fair. Yeah. When they're doing early planning. Um, what was I about to say? Oh, yeah, and also, uh, was a nice little tidbit, and this isn't surprising at all. They planned for a lot less Sephiroth than at some point during the development. Like, let's add more, so they just sprinkle him more throughout the game. Yeah, which, when you, when you know that he is impacting events and everything like that, and, like, you know, fucking with things, fucking with the timeline and everything, and that's, it, once you know that, I think you need that much Sephiroth because you you need to see like you need to get to the end and be like oh he was there he was there for every you know every change in the whispers it was yeah. always him if, if you like and they even say in here in the original game Sephiroth was very very much Jaws yeah the the movie Jaws where it's like you hear about Sephiroth everyone talks about Sephiroth you see the Midgar Zalem being impaled you see all the you see the aftermath of Sephiroth but you very rarely see Sephiroth and it makes him scarier and makes mm. the idea of Sephiroth very like um like horror movie-esque 
Um, and that was definitely the direction they, they talk about, like, that was probably the direction they were going to go with this remake. But when you have that whole, t- the messing with the timeline thing, I think the super limited Sephiroth would not have worked as well. Mm-hmm. Cause I think it would have been harder to like, say like, you know, it's Sephiroth. It would have been more, we, we would have seen the whispers in Sephiroth as two, two d- distinctive things when we shouldn't have been, you know? So mm-hmm. I think that was the right call. Yeah. Yeah. It could have been, they didn't do it. And the ending was kind of saying, it's like, Sephiroth was coming out of nowhere doing this shit. It, it, he, already that ending felt out of nowhere in some ways. It would have feel, felt even more so in a bad way. Yeah. If you had, if, if he had only showed up like twice. Yeah. yeah it would have been like, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you already had a problem enough with like, I've seen a lot of new people be like, so what is Sephiroth? You know, like, like this game does not do a very good job of of setting up Sephiroth for new people, and that's kind of the whole point. Yeah. Is that he's he is the old Sephiroth, or he is the Sephiroth that's coming in? You know, he because this is a sequel, it's yeah. still hard to wrap our minds around. But this is a sequel, so that's why. But I've seen a lot of new people be like, I get that he's supposed to be bad, but I don't. He was I don't understand. He's not set up at all. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and more even says during this thing as far as like, oh, people originally thought you know they could just not play the original game and just play this, but I was like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> but it like that's always going to be so weird to me because like they even talk in this game in this interview about like making this game and they're like, okay, well we wanted to make something that new people and old people alike will both be surprised and find yeah. interesting, but again, it's kind of hilarious how. It, this game is designed to goat the new people in <laughs> and then at the very end be like, ha, fuck you. <laughs> didn't play the original. Hey, old guys, you only you can kind of maybe know what's going on. <laughs> like, you bring them all the way through and then you'd be like, okay, I'm talking to the old guys only. <laughs> you guys yeah. turn, turn, turn away. <laughs> Let's talk about fate. <laughs> so, so funny. It's a giant troll. It's a giant troll of a game and I love it so much. <laughs> Whew. All right, so that's that's about it we have yeah. in here in the Ultimedia thing. I think we ended up making a pretty long video anyway because it's what we do. Yep, 36 minutes. Nice. <laughs> Incapable of brevity with this game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. So we got to wait years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I swear, even like that era thing, I just found out not that long ago. And like every time... <laughs> I look more into this game I'm finding more things and I haven't even really gone back through my second playthrough I'm I'm in chapter 6 or 7 wherever mm. I am with, uh, with my sister so it, you're like, gonna have like an epiphany at some point because <gasps> it's like what what <laughs> exactly yeah I'm gonna, and, I, and I'm like I can't tell you yet I can't tell you we gotta beat it no, I can tell you because we haven't even gotten to Aerith yet and that's when I okay. really want to be like alright alright here we go Shh. <laughs> Turn it on the big brain. Dre, I thought you played this game. <laughs> like, I have. Sh- 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 <laughs> yeah, because right now it's like, okay, I'm try- trying to, s- to see the things. But Aerith is where it's like every word that girl says in the second playthrough, I'm going to be like, what do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you Tell me your secrets. Your secrets. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. I'm sure this will be far from the last time we um, ramble on about Final Fantasy VII Remake. So. Wait till Jake can finish. Hey. <laughs> we get to go through the whole thing again and be like, all right, Jacob, so the three people, <laughs> they're the three students. Explain everything again. <laughs> then we have an epiphany during it. I have to explain it all to him. All right. Bye. Bye.